If you're living in a home in Hartlepool that is worth £150,000, you're paying a council tax bill of nearly £2,000, actually £1,858. If you're living in a house in Westminster that is worth £8 million, for your home in Westminster, you're paying a council tax bill of £1,655. That comparison demonstrates the essential unfairness of the council tax system. Year on year, it's worsening the inequalities and the impact on some of the poorest and most disadvantaged communities. The poorer areas, the financially disadvantaged areas, over time, those um, inequalities uh, are widening. We need to address it in the longer term to reverse this trend of poorer areas paying more and wealthier areas paying a far less proportion of the value of their property. So it's unjust. I see growing poverty and inequality uh, among my constituents. Half the children now in Barking and Dagenham are growing up in poverty. One in four families in Barking and Dagenham are, have not got enough money to feed their children every day of the week and have to go to food banks. You know, there's been an exponential increase in the reliance of, uh, of people, many of whom are in work, who are now relying on food banks, which was unheard of. Uh, um, 20 years ago. Over the last 13 years, we have seen a systemic and regular cutting of central government support for local government, with constraints on local government as to how it can raise its own taxes. There's a, a cost of living crisis, and that's compounded by the position that my local authority, in common with many others, um, have seen a, quite a dramatic reduction in support from the government. And what that has meant is that local government services have been massively uh, damaged by lack of resources. And you see probably most importantly around community care. So any hope of providing sufficient uh, services to care for the elderly or people with disabilities in the community is for the birds nowadays. That's for children, uh, children in care, for the elderly and for vulnerable, for social services. So they take a, a, a very large proportion of the, of the local authority and budget. So more of the burden is falling on individual households. Poverty, poor public services at the local level and the national level, and uh, no access to those basic rights that make for uh, a tolerable sort of living, standard of living in the 21st century. All that is missing and all that needs to be tackled. But that's again going to compound the problems that we're facing and the cost of living crisis that's facing many households in constituencies like mine. Council tax is one of the most unpopular taxes among people today because although it was supposed to be progressive, it is now very regressive. It's quite insidious in, in the way it operates and it's brought into sharp focus in my constituency where for a variety of reasons a majority of the properties are in the lowest valuation band, band A. So someone living in a, in a very modest uh, uh, um, property, a semi-detached house, uh, would be paying more in council tax than someone in a very affluent eight million pound uh, townhouse just a few yards from where we are here in Westminster. What has happened is that there has not been a revaluation of properties since 1991. And that has a particular effect here in London where uh, property values are extremely high. So there are many, many years out of date and as a consequence, those inequalities, which were apparent in 1991-92, have become magnified with the passage of time. And if we think about the major infrastructure investments, especially here in London, with the Elizabeth Line, Crossrail, you know, the, the, the many substantial investments of very large amounts of public money, 
It's the people who live near to the railway stations and underground stations that provide them with excellent services have seen the benefit in increased property prices. Now that's come about as a result of public investment. My constituents, on the other hand, have seen very little in the way of investment in public services or transport infrastructure. There is a lot of anger across the country at the council tax system. People feel it's intrinsically unfair and people cannot relate the money they pay to the services they enjoy. And I don't think people really understand that the poorest 10% will pay 8% of their income, spend 8% of their income on council tax, whereas the richest 40% only spend between 2 and 3%. Constituencies like mine that were at the heart of the Industrial Revolution, they provided the fuel, the coal that fired the engines of industry that made Britain great. So it simply is not a progressive system of taxation. And I think having a progressive system of taxation on property is something on which there's agreement across the political spectrum, which is why this reform could be something that uh, captures the support uh, across political parties. And now that we need this period of support, households individually need a financial boost and the area needs a boost as well. Whether there's a recognition of the unfairness between areas, I don't think there is. I don't think people really get that, which is why this campaign and this film project is so important. And it's one of the reasons why I feel so strongly about the Fair Shares campaign.